Hello, this is MEI Further Maths Core Pure. We're in the second matrices section and on the fourth video on successive transformations in two dimensions. You can watch the video straight through but you will probably find it helpful sometimes to pause the video and try things out for yourself before continuing to watch. Here are the reflection matrices you need to be familiar with. And these are the rotations. You don't need to memorise them as you can work them out easily from the effect on 1, 0 and 0, 1. But it does help if you remember they all have two zeros and two ones, positive or negative. You may want to memorise the general rotation matrix though. However, you can always check this with a quick sketch as well. Here are the stretch and enlargement matrices you need to know. Again, as long as you have an idea of what they look like, you can work them out quickly from a sketch. Let's have a look at what happens if we apply more than one transformation to a shape. Here we're going to consider the transformation A followed by the transformation B. Let's see what happens. So, I take the matrix for A, 1, 0, 0, minus 1, and apply it to the coordinates of my triangle. 1, minus 2, 5, minus 2, and 5, minus 4. That gives me 1, 5, 5, 2, 2, 4. Now I take the matrix B and apply it to that new triangle. 1, 2, 5, 2, 5, 4. Now I get minus 2, minus 2, minus 4, 1, 5, 5. And that looks like this. Let's compare the matrices AB and BA with the result. AB is the matrix A multiplied by the matrix B and we get 0, minus 1, minus 1, 0. As we saw before, this is a reflection in the line y equals minus x. BA, writing B first, 0, 1, minus 1, 0, and then 1, 0, 0, minus 1, gives us 0, 1, 1, 0, and that is a reflection in the line y equals x, and that's what I've got here. So it seems that the transformation A followed by B is the matrix BA rather than the matrix AB. That might surprise you to start with, but it does make sense. Let's look at the calculations applying A followed by B to the point XY. That's what I've got here. But we know that matrix multiplication is associative, so I can change the bracketing to this. And that's the matrix BA applied to the point XY. So for two transformations represented by the matrices M and N, the matrix NM gives the single transformation represented by M followed by N, and the matrix MN represents N followed by M. 
Let's try this example. We want the matrix that represents a stretch of scale factor 3 in the y direction, followed by an anticlockwise rotation about the origin of 90 degrees. The stretch is easy to remember, and you'll soon get the hang of this. For the rotation, it's one of those matrices made up of zeros, ones and minus ones. And it helps to be able to work these out to double check what you've remembered. The point one zero is going to get mapped to the point zero one. So that means that the first column of my matrix is zero one. The point zero one will get mapped to the point minus one zero. So that gives me the second column of my rotation matrix. So I want the stretch followed by the rotation, which means that I write down the rotation first, and then the matrix for the stretch, and multiply them in that order. That gives me 0, minus 3, 1, 0. And that's what it looks like. There are more notes on integral on successive transformations in two dimensions. That's the end of this short video. The next video on the series is on transformations in three dimensions.